Hello everyone, I'm here in the UK. I was formerly a club and radio DJ and music journalist. These days I'm an author, researcher, speaker in truth and alternative type issues. I've been on this path for 10 years. My specialist area of interest has been who really controls the entertainment industry and particularly the corporate music industry. And I've been full-time researching this for several years. I've put out two books titled Musical Truth, detailing all my findings. One of the most interesting areas of research to me has been discovering that the controllers of these industries are the controllers of every aspect of our daily lives, and particularly the architects of the current narrative that we're experiencing, are occultists. They're dark occultists. They adhere to ritualistic uh, behaviors according to their religious belief systems. And understanding how they employ these is very key to getting to know what the next step is likely to be and what their next move is going to consist of. Uh, also, a very interesting area for me has been studying the area of predictive programming, which is where aspects of events that are known to be coming are placed in uh, popular culture. So you get it in music videos, movies, TV shows, and such. Also, being that these individuals operate through different groups and secret societies and mystery schools, they adhere to this tenet of placing the truth in plain sight. And it's also known as revelation of the method. And this is where they give us an opportunity to know what they're all about and what they're going to do. And we'll probably get into this later, but getting a handle on how and why they employ this tactic is very key to working out how to counter the various things they're doing to us. So I hope that will be useful later in the conversation. Could you talk to us about how all of these kind of came about around the same time. You see kind of this pandemic where everybody's on board, on time, and they're all implementing the exact same measures. So again, that goes back to Event 201, this predictive programming. Um, Mark, could you talk to us about that? We can know that we have invisible controllers who hide in the shadows from the fact that virtually all countries around the world adopted the same lockdown measures at pretty much the same time with just a few weeks different. There are a few rogue states like Belarus, Iceland, uh, Sweden, and a few others that don't seem to be playing ball uh, like all the other countries. But for the most part, the world as a whole went into lockdown around about the same time. And this was all in March. It was all around the time of the spring equinox, which is very important when we get into the nature of these occultists again and some of the dates that they observe with their ritualistic behavior. But uh, we have these groups, these uh, think tanks that specialize in working out how uh, they're going to control and uh, dominate and manipulate the rest of us. And we can be pretty sure that uh, the real controllers of this world get together in groups such as the Bilderberg Group, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, lots of these groups whose names we know. And there'll also be many whose names we don't get to hear about. But the point is, we can know from this that governments don't run the world. So Boris Johnson is not in charge of the United Kingdom. Donald Trump is not running the United States. There are other higher ups that are dictating the way these things play out. There's also an organization known as the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations based in London. And this group specializes in mass mind control and social engineering. They shape and mold public attitudes and public reactions and behaviors. And we can be sure that Tavistock have played a big role in this current narrative, particularly in terms of things like social distancing and uh, self-isolation, these buzzwords, these phrases that we're now all familiar with. And they've put this stuff in their writings for many, many decades as well. So it's not as if those of us who are paying attention don't have the opportunity to know uh, how these groups operate and the sort of things that they plan to do to us. There's a movie that came out in 1927, almost 100 years ago, called Metropolis. It was directed by uh, a German Freemason by the name of Fritz Lang, and it depicted a futuristic scenario very similar to the one we've got now. So uh, when you watch that movie, the cityscape in which the characters are all living is very similar to the blueprint for the AI smart grid uh, human settlement zones, futuristic smart cities that uh, we have right now controlled by 5G and artificial intelligence. And this tells you that as long ago as 1927, 
these groups had an idea of where they eventually wanted to take society. So they operate uh, years and decades ahead of time. They display incredible levels of patience and incredible levels of persistence and uh, tenacity and sticking to the plan. And we're seeing so much of that come to pass now. And again, going back to the idea of predictive programming, which is where we're given an opportunity to know what is coming, there was a movie that came out much more recently in 2011 called Contagion. I've not seen the whole movie, but I've seen some clips from it. And in the uh, dialogue to this movie, they're talking about things like self-isolation and social distancing. They're using these terms. So back then, nine years ago, it was known that these terms were coming and we, would be, we were being prepped for it in the form of these things being placed into works of popular culture. The way these groups and these networks and these individuals operate is by our tacit consent and approval. It's quite a complicated metaphysical concept, but they feel that if they let us know what's coming and give us an opportunity to know what's going to happen to us, when we don't voice any kind of objection, they take our unspoken uh, reaction as our tacit consent to what's happening. So not saying no is as good as saying yes as far as they're concerned. It doesn't matter if people don't believe this. It doesn't, doesn't matter if people think this is nonsense. They do, and they operate by these tenets. And as I said earlier, understanding this gives us a good heads up on uh, what might be coming next and how we get out of it just by voicing the fact that we do not consent. That's why I wear this t-shirt stating, I do not consent and I was never asked. I think, I think that's a very affirmative statement to put out into creation. Sure, I just wanted to take up the issue of vaccines once again. I know we're all about trying to find glimmers of hope and optimism here. And I feel the subject of vaccines is where this narrative that the controllers are driving may come unstuck. Because it's been my personal experience from conversations that I've had, and a lot of other people have messaged me to tell me they've had the same experience. There seems to be a lot of public awareness of the fact that vaccines aren't entirely safe. And this is among people that wouldn't ordinarily question mainstream narratives. So when it comes to this whole virus thing, they're probably buying what the BBC Evening News is telling them about uh, the wider subject. But when it comes to vaccines, there has been so much controversy about it. There's been so much debate about it. It's in people's minds that vaccines aren't necessarily as safe as we're being told they are by mainstream sources. And also, vaccines in this whole uh, situation are very much coming with Bill Gates's name attached. And I can tell you from personal experience, again, from conversations that I've had and from looking at Bill Gates's social media pages, and when you go on YouTube and you look at the comments beneath any interview that Bill Gates has done, his name is dirt right now. Bill Gates is getting savaged on every chat thread going. People are wise to the fact that he's Mr. Eugenics, he's all about population reduction, he's evil because that's his true nature. He's not what you think he is. He's not just this harmless, nerdy computer guy. He's deeply sinister. He's creepy. There's something about him. People know this about Bill Gates. So I think they're going to have to find themselves a new poster boy to push this whole thing because anything which comes, comes with Bill Gates' name attached, uh, I feel, is doomed to failure now. So there is some hope there because there's a big pushback against vaccines, and that's been as a result of alternative information being able to circulate and the likes of us doing our thing and going against the mainstream uh, narrative and offering people alternative information. I think we've seen some success in the pushback there's been already with vaccines, and that's got to continue in other aspects of uh, what's going on here. But there is uh, reason for hope and optimism there, I would suggest. Yeah, some solutions are very simple, as we've discussed. I mean, this is my smartphone, so uh, I never bothered going down that route. So when it comes to the contact tracing, if they operate by apps, nobody would be getting me with this. And this is my sat-nav, so uh, I still prefer to read old-school maps, so I'm not getting traced via my car either. But when it comes to solutions, so much of it comes down to non-compliance, just not acquiescing with uh, the plans that they have for us. 
I did a rant video a couple of weeks ago where I was in my car and I was just sounding off because I just got back from the town centre and I'd been through the humiliating, degrading experience of trying to get into some shops just to get essential supplies. And it's the same thing all over the world, you know, these ridiculous bits of tape you have to stand behind. You've got some jumped up little tyrant on the door telling you where you can go and uh, in this video, I was just sounding off about how ridiculous this all is, and I got a ton of support from all over the world, people saying they felt exactly the same way. Now, just imagine if large numbers of us got together and said, we're just not going to put up with this anymore. We're not going to comply with these ridiculous restrictions. If nobody was having it, then these things just would not stick. And a great idea I've had in recent days is people have said, all the shops that have forced us to go through these degrading experiences, let's just boycott them from now on. Just, just don't go to them. Just frequent shops that don't force you to go through these ridiculous rituals. But in terms of drawing some hope and optimism and positivity from all this, look at what we've had dumped on us by the control system these past few weeks. They've thrown everything they've got at us all at once. And this is not their ordinary style. Normally they do things, things in incremental steps. They sneak things in gradually, the totalitarian tiptoe, but they've thrown everything in the kitchen sink at us. And this speaks to me of them panicking. They want to get all the pieces of their puzzle in place very, very quickly because they're concerned if they leave it much longer, too many of us are going to get wise to what they're all about and the likes of us are going to be sharing too much empowering inspirational information uh, to other people so we've got to keep that stepped up we've got to get more and more people on our side of truth we've got to get the numbers uh, because they fear us they fear that process happening and we've got an indication of that so we just got to keep it stepped up keep doing our thing never lose hope and remember history is being written every day and it's not a done deal yet we get to decide how this whole thing plays out absolutely uh, very well said thank you mark